Hi guys, in today's video, I aim to bring you the most comprehensive settings and performance guide available for CS2. We'll cover window settings, in-game settings, and other performance related settings that will help you achieve lag-free and stutter-free gameplay. I encourage you to watch the video to its completion so that you can take advantage of every single tip, but I have bookmarked out the various fixes so that you can skip around if needed. Stick around and let's get started. Before getting started with in-game settings, there's some general Windows housekeeping that we're gonna wanna take care of. To get started, we'll click Start and type Update into the search bar. Then we'll click Check for Updates. But before clicking Check for Updates, we're gonna wanna go into Advanced Options. And every radio button related to the advanced options of Windows updates, we're going to want to switch off as we don't want a Windows update to come through whilst we are having a gaming session. So receive updates for other Microsoft products off. Get me up to date off. Download updates over a metered connection off. And finally, notify me when a restart is required to finish updating, we'll switch off. We'll close that down and return to Windows update a little bit later. Next, we'll click Start. We'll type in Settings, click Settings, and come over to Gaming. We'll start with Game Bar, which in this case, we need to switch off. It's an additional overlay that really doesn't help CS2 and it hinders your performance slightly. We'll go one level back to Gaming and come under Captures. Everything related to captures from a Windows perspective, we're gonna wanna turn off record what happened off, capture audio when recording a game off, and capture mouse quarter, cursor when recording a game off. Then finally we'll click on game mode. Game mode we can leave on as it actually does help optimize your PC ever so slightly for CS2 by reducing background apps. Then within the same menu we'll click on graphics and we'll put CS in the search list. We'll look for CS2 and we'll click on it and then finally click options inside of options we need to make sure that high performance is selected and not that windows is deciding whether we are running high or power saving performance mode then we'll close that down click start type cmd into the search box for command prompt right click on it and run as administrator once that pops up we're going to paste the following code into command prompt. It will be in the description of the video. You'll hit enter. And what that will do is enable an ultimate performance power mode that we're going to enable in the power settings now. So we'll click start, type in control panel, click on control panel, come to system, come to power options, and we'll have ultimate performance mode enabled. Finally, close that down and we're going to update the machine both from a Windows perspective as well as your drivers. I would recommend doing your NVIDIA or AMD drivers at this point before doing your Windows drivers update. If you're running an NVIDIA card, head to this website which will be in the description and select your series of NVIDIA graphics card. Hit search, it will give you the latest game ready driver, download it, follow the prompts and install it. If you're running an AMD card, latest release is 15.7.1, download it for the appropriate operating system, Windows 10, Windows 11 64 bit, install it and then we'll be good to go on to the next step. Okay, so at this point we're ready to update the machine from a Windows perspective. To do that, we'll click start, type update, Click on check for updates and at the top right click the blue button check for updates the reason why it's preferable to do the windows update last is because it will likely take about five or ten minutes and cause your machine to reboot in the process naturally we want to try and do that last once that's done your machine will reboot and we'll be ready to take on some settings in the nvidia control panel right so next up is the nvidia control panel settings Unfortunately, I only have an NVIDIA card to be able to show you with, but the process is largely the same for AMD cards. 
First thing you'll do is right click on the desktop, click NVIDIA control panel and wait for it to load up. The very first thing we'll do is come over to manage 3D settings where in reality there's only two settings that we're going to want to change. The first being power management mode. You can, if you'd like, set this to prefer maximum performance at all times, meaning that when the game is running, the card is going to be tapping out at its full potential. In my experience, I've found that because of heat when playing the game, the card will fluctuate in terms of its clock frequency. So it's better to set it to adaptive in order to have a stutter-free gameplay. But you can experiment with the two settings, either having adaptive or prefer maximum performance. I wouldn't recommend optimal power because that's trying to bal balance out power requirements and not really giving you a good gaming experience. The next is setting the preferred refresh rate to the highest available for your given monitor. So you'll want to click that highest available refresh rate for your given monitor. Next, we'll come over to change resolution. And if you haven't done so already, we'll set the refresh rate to the highest that your monitor can possibly output. So in my case, that's 144 Hertz. Next, we'll come up to adjust desktop color settings. And there's only really one setting that we want to play with here, and that's digital vibrance. All this does is give colors a pop especially reds, greens, and blues. It gives the base colors a pop in CS2. Um, I found that 75% is a good balance, but you can go as high as 80, even 90% if you really want the colors of CS2 to pop. Lastly, if you're playing a non-native resolution, you would come to adjust desktop size and position. So for example, you're playing on 1024 by 768 or 1280 by 960, something non-native to your refresh rate and your monitor, um, you would then come and set your scaling to full screen instead of on aspect ratio. And what that will do is get rid of the black bars on either side of your screen and give you a full picture where the player models are a bit wider. If you want a separate video on how to set up correctly, uh, playing on a non-native resolution, then let me know down in the comments. Once you've done all of that, you can come out of NVIDIA Inspector and save all of those changes. Okay, so finally we get to talk about some in-game settings for CS2. We're going to start off with video. We will ultimately touch on audio, which hopefully will bring us to the same level of audio that we had in CSGO but in CS2 with the settings that I believe make the biggest difference. But for now, we'll start off by pressing Shift and Tab and then going to Settings in the Steam Overlay. Once we're in Settings, we'll go in Game and we'll enable an in-game FPS counter in the top left or the top right just so that we can monitor our progress. Then we'll come over to Settings and the very first settings we'll touch is under the Video tab. Now under video is the display mode, whether you're gonna play in full screen or full screen windowed. Now I've done numerous testing between the two and I can honestly say that full screen windowed is providing a better experience for the reason that if you're in full screen windowed, you can alt tab quicker to the desktop and when dying, there's an animation in CS2 that does feel like it's stuttering when you're in full screen mode. I'm not sure what the reason for that is, but in my testing, I can honestly say that full screen windowed has provided overall a better experience. If you would like to play on full screen yourself, that's absolutely fine too, but it has provided a better experience in my experience. Then we'll touch on advanced video. These settings you can copy paste pretty much as is. We will come and fine tune these in a moment. Um, but for the best experience I've found on most hardware, you can pretty much copy paste these values one for one. So we'll go through them. Boost player contrast, it just gives a bit of an outline on players in the distance, so you can leave that enabled. Wait for vertical sync, we definitely want to disable because that introduces input latency. And we don't want any input latency between our shots and the shots connecting. Then 
values that I have for multi-sampling, you can leave that on four times. Most graphics cards, anything over four gigabyte graphics card these days playing CS2, um, you can leave it on four times. We'll come back to that setting in just a moment. Uh, global shadow quality, I would encourage you to leave it as high as possible. It's not such a huge performance hit and you wanna be able to see shadows, especially in this game, where shadows can ultimately give away your position. Model texture quality to save on VRAM, even though you might have a 10, 12, 24 gigabyte card, irrespective, the texture quality is so high in CS2 that you can just leave it on low. Texture filtering mode, always put it up as high as you possibly can, 16 times. Shader detail, you can leave it on high, but particle detail, I would encourage you to leave that as low as you possibly can. Um, when particles are up close, things like fire, um, explosions, sparks from bullets hitting on fences and that sort of thing usually happens up close and in your face and that detail at greater distances is lost. You don't need it. It's extra CPU processing power and this is a CPU intensive game, not so much a graphically intensive game. That's why you'll notice most of these settings, we're actually trying to unbound the CPU in this instance and not so much the graphics card. Ambient occlusion, I leave it disabled. It just darkers things in corners. Um, so if you've got two corners intersecting, it will make them a little bit darker because there's less light. But you can leave it disabled for the sake of visibility. High dynamic range, I leave that at performance. There's no real upside to setting it to quality. And this setting here is gonna largely determine when we actually load up the map and see how we're doing in terms of performance. This fidelity effects super resolution is a means of scaling your native resolution. So for example, if you play at 1920 by 1080, um, this, if you set it to say medium or balanced, this will actually run the game in a lower resolution and then upscale it to your desired resolution. So you can see huge performance gain here for very little in the way of uh, quality degradation. NVIDIA reflex latency, if you've got an NVIDIA card, I recommend leaving that enabled. So as far as video settings go, really copy these one for one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to play, we're gonna come over to practice, and we're gonna take one of Valve's newly remastered maps overpass because I find it's really good at setting a benchmark for performance. We'll let that load up. Okay, we'll pick a side. Okay, very first thing we're going to want to do is press the tilde key to bring up the console and we'll type bot underscore kick just to get rid of all the bots and make this a practice match. Then if you don't have console enabled, you can go to settings, game and scroll to the top. It'll be the very, very first option here, enable console, just so that you can do these commands. Next command we'll do is FPS underscore max and we'll set it to zero just so that our fps is uncapped so you can see in the top right corner i'm getting roughly 260 frames per second with these settings now where we're going to go is to what i think the most performance impact on this map or what has the most performance impact on this map and it's this area of long just because there is so much in the way you can see I've dropped from 260, I've dropped all the way down to 214 frames per second. So on your rig, this is where you're gonna determine where you deviate those settings that I just gave you. Now, if you recall, I mentioned under the game settings, so if we hit settings, game, and we go back to video, advanced video, these are the two settings that you're gonna to wanna to play with. And just to give you an idea, we'll set Fidelity FX Super Resolution we'll set it all the way down to balance and apply that. Now you'll notice some degradation in terms of quality, not much to be honest, but our FPS are all the way back up at 260. So just that single setting alone can net you upwards of 60, 70 frames. And that is honestly the one that you need to be playing with. Um, if you still need more performance, you can go straight back and disable your multi-sampling or at least put it down. But just take note that that will introduce jagged lines where multi-sampling is trying to correct jagged lines. So for example, on the edges of trees, edges of buildings, and that's not something that you really want. 
And that about sums it up for video performance. Next, we'll talk about audio. Okay, so we finally get to talk about audio. And audio in CS2 is quite funny because it's naturally quite subjective. What sounds good for someone might not necessarily sound as good for someone else. But my goal with audio in CS2 was to try and get it to the same level of immersion that we had in CSGO and the same surround sound experience that we had. Now, to cover this, we'll need to go to the audio tab, naturally, in audio, and play around with some of these settings here. Now, Valve have gone and built their own in-house surround sound algorithm, for lack of a better word. We are gonna play with this in order to get the best possible sound out of CS2. In CS2, um, the first thing that I'll change is the EQ profile. I found that out of the three EQ profiles that we have on offer, that natural sounds the best. Crisp is there supposedly to try and accentuate the highs, um, things like grenades bouncing off of walls and that sort of thing. Um, but I find that it can be a little bit strenuous on the listener. So natural is kind of the better fit. The next thing we're gonna play with is left and right isolation. Think of this as on the left hand side being 5.1 surround sound and on the right hand side being complete stereo. We're gonna set it all the way to the right hand side 100% in effect giving us stereo spread and stereo separation. The reason for this is because we don't want CS2's engine, audio engine to be providing the surround sound mixing. We want a stereo setup and then we're gonna be doing our own surround sound with either Dolby or your own surround sound software that you may have with your heads headphones. Um, the next setting that we're gonna set is perspective correction. We're gonna go ahead and set that to no. That's also part of CS2's in-house audio solution where they're trying to do the surround sound mixing on their own. Once you have these three settings set as they are, natural, 100% left and right isolation and perspective correction, then we can go into Windows and then actually elevate our sound ourselves. The very first thing that you wanna gonna do is right click in Windows 11 on your little sound icon tray here and click properties. Then scroll down all the way to more sound settings and wait for this little dialogue to pop up. Then on your headphones, you'll right click and select properties and go to spatial sound. Now, if you don't have Dolby access, you can enjoy for seven days, I believe it is, a limited time offer where you can use the software. I really do recommend buying it. Um, if not, and you don't wanna fork out for, for Dolby, then you can make use of Windows Sonic for headphones, which is also a spatial virtual 5.1, 7.1 surround sound option. It is pretty good. It's better in my opinion than um, CS2's inbuilt engine for audio, but the premier solution being Dolby Atmos. So what you'll do is select that and you're pretty much done. If you don't have Dolby Atmos or if you'd like to try it, it's quite simple to get it. Hit start, type in Microsoft Store. Hopefully you logged in already. If not, then just sign in with your Microsoft credentials and wait for it to load up. In the search field, type in Dolby Access and come to this app over here. In my side, it will just say open, but on your side, if you don't have it, it will say install, where once installed, it will open up and it will offer you a seven day free trial. But in our case, we're gonna open it up. And I'm quite satisfied but we'll rate it later. You'll come over to products just to make sure that you do have Dolby Atmos for headphones and it's ready for use. And under settings, the best one in my experience is game and performance mode. And it's as simple as that. If you've got game and performance mode set up in Dolby Atmos and you're using it as your spatial sound option and you've got those settings in CS2, um, described as I put them, then Dolby is doing your surround sound for you and not the inbuilt CS2 option. The final and third option is for you to use your own headphones um, 
virtualized surround sound. If you've got something like a Logitech G Pro and they've got their own 7.1 surround sound, you can make use of that with the same settings in CSGO. It's gonna provide a very similar experience. Um, ultimately, I would say Dolby, they've been in business for very many years and they know what they're doing when it comes to surround sound. That would be my preferred option. And that pretty much sums it up. Guys, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in some way, I would implore you to leave a like, comment, consider subscribing, it really helps out grow the channel. And please feel free to comment down below anything else you think I might've missed or any particular tips that you have for CS2 to try and help this game to get it running just as good as our beloved CSGO did in the past. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.